Hello and welcome to another class of ABM Science. This is Alisa Guru. So, first of all, I am very sorry after long due, I am putting this video. So today I will be discussing about the skeleton of a cell. You know that every animal has a skeleton. Upon the muscles are there, which form the body. Now, the tissues are made up of cells, and the cell has their own skeleton. Like your body does. So both eukaryotes and prokaryotic cellular cytoskeleton we will discuss here. Not only eukaryotes but also prokaryotes we will discuss here. So whenever you want to rupture a cell or to take the materials out of the cells, you have to treat the cells with detergents. But here we are using non-ionic detergents. So non-ionic detergents they will not put or snatch any kind of charge against any protein there. It will just solubilize, permeabilize the membrane, and cytosolic proteins will be diffused away. So after the diffusion process, you will see you will get two things. One is membrane-limited organelles, another one is filaments of the cytoskeleton. Okay. So here we will be discussing about the cytoskeleton part. So let's go to the. The cytoskeleton composition first of all it contains three elements. One is microfilament. You can see the structure over here. How this structure is. It contains subunits. Subunit forms and it make a complex structure like this. It is called microfilament, which composed of actin. The second one is the microtubule. It is a you can see it is a bundle-like structure. Is it? It is observable. The microtubules are the composite structure for alpha and beta tubulins. And another one is the intermediate filaments. That is the intermediate filaments, which has this kind of structure. And I will discuss everything how the structure forms and what are the components. But the primary division of the cytoskeleton composition is like this: microfilaments, microtubules, and intermediate filaments. That is the lamins, so which is primarily present in the nuclear membrane. Okay. Now, intermediate filaments are also composed of several other proteins that I have told, that is keratin, desmin, bimentin, others. So, we are keratin-containing filaments in epithelial cells. Desmin containing filaments we will be seeing in the muscle cells and vimentin containing filaments you will be seeing in the mesenchymal cells. So you should remember these points. I am not written here. So these are the few very important examples. Now, cytoskeletal structure is evolutionary very much conserved. Okay, so it is a conserved structure. In the evolution process, either plants or animals, the protein structure is conserved. Means the sequential identity identity you will find in both the organisms. Now, the first intermediate filament which was you uh, characterized was the nuclear lamina. Okay, that you should also remember. Now here I have already said cytoskeleton filaments are formed bundles and networks. Bundles are closely packed parallel areas where filaments crisscross and web-like structures forms. Next part. Here you see the structure here. This one in the right side. This is a spoke and hub structure in a cellular cytoskeleton of a eukaryotic cell. So spoke and hub. It is a structure where you will be observing. That uh, that is the particular example of a erythrocyte cell which I am discussing here. Now erythrocyte cells have to travel and squeeze to the or just paint uh, adjacent layer of tissues to move from one to another. So in this blood circulation, the erythrocyte should be uh, flexible enough. In maintaining their structure so that it can move forward, okay, or backward, or circulate all over the array. Now the two structures of bundles and networks are the most common arrangements in cytoskeletal filaments in a cell. 
okay now a red blood cell must squeeze through the narrow blood capillaries i already told you without rupturing its membrane so it needs a gel like consistency and a three dimensional structure which should be supporting the cytoskeleton now you are understanding that so here the primary component of erythrocyte cytoskeleton is spectrin you can see here in this color this is the spectrin tetramer it is a tetrameric structure so spectrin is a tetramer which supports the spoke and hub structure of a erythrocyte cell this is just uh, depiction of a erythrocyte cell how it maintains and what are the composition of the cytoskeleton present inside it now each spoke is composed of a single spectrin molecule which extends from two hub and cross links them so single spectrin molecule now you'll see this you just consider this circle over here which hub now this point this dot is acting as a hub okay now this is the hub and this is the spokes if you see this this is you can consider this as a spoke and this is the hub now each hub comprises a sort 14 subunits 14 subunit protein actin filament plus so now you can see here these are the actin filament this pink color these are 14 subunit actin filaments plus you will find here adducin molecules which are supporting the spectrin actin network this is the hub this is the spectrin and here it is present the adducin molecules and tropomycin and tropomodulin and band 4.1 4 proteins now what are the functions of this so here tropomodulin and tropomyosin is preventing the actin filament from depolarization so it should not be open structure it is closed down or it is maintained in that form due to this presence of this tropomycin and tropomodulin actin you know that is a microfilament and band 4.1 uh, adducin uh, these are also some important structures which supports this hub network because this is a crisscross structure so spectrin molecules will cross this and again it will be passing this through and likewise this spoke and hub network is maintained in a cell so this is the kind of an example of a erythrocyte cell I hope it's clear. So this is the plasma membrane. Beneath the plasma membrane, there is, there is a spoken hub structure which supports the cell, contains 14 subunit of actin, then adducin, tropomodulin, tropomycin, band 4.1 are present there, which supports the cytoskeleton. Come to the intermediate filaments that supports the nuclear membrane. So I told you already. That the intermediate filaments typically crisscross the cytosol, crisscross the cytosol, forming an internal framework that stretches from the nuclear envelope to the plasma membrane. Okay, so mainly nuclear centric activity you will see here in case of intermediate filaments, though they are widely distributed in the cytosol. So a network of intermediate filaments is located adjacent to some cellular membranes, so it provides mechanical support. Lamin A and Lamin C filaments form an orthogonal lattice that is associated with Lamin B, the entire supporting structure called the nuclear lamina, as nuclear envelope is directly contacted with these proteins to the cytoplasm. Now, it is anchored to the inner nuclear membrane by phenyl anchors. So, these are some kind of, you will see in the lipid chapter, there are lipophilic structures which supports the Lamin B protein. Okay, in the intermediate filament, and they combinedly, I mean A, B, C, combinedly form the nuclear envelope and the cytosolic supporting structure. Now, intermediate filaments are attached by adapter proteins to specialized cell junctions also. So, you can see the role of intermediate filaments in also maintaining the cell junctions. Now, what are cell junctions? Cell junctions. Are those junctions likewise you can suppose a railway is uh, a train is crossing two junctions so is connecting the two junctions likewise two stations if you see the two cells are the two stations 
Now the cell cell junction, this intermediate filament by forming desmosomes and hemidesmosomes, these are the structures which makes the tunnel through which intermediate filaments connect one cell to another cell, which leads cell cell adhesion and cell matrix adhesion respectively, particularly in epithelial tissue. So you can see here the cell matrix as well as cell cell adhesion as well as cellular communications through cell junctions are primarily maintained by intermediate filaments. So you see the importance of this intermediate filament. As I have said earlier, vimentin, desmins, keratins, these are also intermediate filaments, but they, they are functionally different, functionally similar in different tissues that I have already done. Now coming to the microtubules, these are the final stage like microfilaments and intermediate filaments, microtubules are not randomly distributed in cells, they are not here and there, mainly they take part in the cellular division part, okay. Now rather microtubules radiate from the centrosome which is the primary microtubule recognizing center that is MTOC in animal cells. The two ends of the microtubule differ in their dynamic properties and, are, and for this reason only they are designated as positive and negative ends. Okay? So the growing end is a positive end. The microtubules can have two distinct orientations related to one another in the cellular structures. In many non-dividing cells, though the NTOC is located at the center of the cell near the nucleus. And the radiating microtubules are all oriented with their positive ends directed towards the cell periphery. How important is the microtubular structure? So this is the MTOC, this is, these are the microtubules radiating or directed with an antibody to tubule. So I hope you have a basic structure of cytoskeleton structure in eukaryotes. Now coming to the now, bacterial cytoskeleton composed of mainly two types of classes, two classes that are microfilament under MREB, the unit in eukaryote it was active, but in prokaryote it is MREB. It is present in the rod surface bacteria and it controls the width. Okay. Now, another one is the microtubule containing protein FTSZ. It is present in most of the bacteria and it controls the cell division. Okay, so during cell division, it takes a crucial role that is FTSZ. So it is equivalent to the microtubules in eukaryotes, and this is the equivalent to the actin in eukaryotes. So here I have drawn some picture. I will use some picture here. You can see the role of MREB in the width control and FTSZ in cellular division. Okay, now how do you know? Or how you can prove that these are functioning like that. So the FTSZ protein, the bacterial homologue of tubulin, is localized around the neck of dividing bacterial cell, suggesting that the FTSZ participate in the cellular division process. Now another bacterial protein that is MREB that I have already told you, it is the strong uh, to act in an atomic structure that is the Eukaryotic structure in eukaryote, actin, is comparable to the actin in eukaryotes and it is, you can see here, several evidence are there that the structural similarity between these proteins of actin and MREB, it speculates that the actin is derived from MREB in the evolutionary uh, process. Now, the FTSZ protein, uh, protein as well as in the bacteria is similar to the tubulin protein. So you can easily deduce that the or you can speculate that the FTSJ protein came from the bacteria and system bacterials which now modified into tubulins in case of alpha and beta in case of eukaryotes. So this is the bacterial cycle. So I have already told you the FTSJ protein bacterial homologue of tubulin just note down the points and uh, it's present in the neck of dividing bacterial cells suggesting that the FTSZ participates in the cell division. Whereas the actin MREB protein that is actin homologue, uh, you can say MREB 
which is present in the bacterial cells controls the width of the bacteria. Now there are experiments which prove that if you mutate the MREB protein in the bacterial cells, the bacterial cells are become wider, okay, or they become wider but not longer. So it can definitely it is proved that if MREB present MREB is not present in the cell or mutated, then the cells become more wider than their wild type forms and they are but they are not longer okay so they become more wider okay and its absence in the spherical bacteria so spherical bacteria do not contain this mreb protein so this is a very important concept you should remember so i hope this informative class help you in your exam so if you like my classes give a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe my channel because these things stimulate me to take futuristic classes for you guys so thank you and be with me.